all these people and you think, oh, okay, it's a public record. No, no, no. They're recording for their own private benefit, commercial benefit. It's not a court of public record unless you call it to be a court of public record. So yeah, that, was, that was kind of the, my point, uh, I, because I wonder if we don't do this, uh, do they even see anything we file? Well, from a public record. Um, well, you see, it's a game playing here, and there is a there's a limit. Obviously, we, we're dealing with people whose competence is still a big unknown to me in in the case of the judiciary. Uh, they clearly know more than they let on, but how much they know is still an uncertainty to me. But I would suggest to you that the main problem, if you do not call a public record, is that they can use their maximum intimidation. You know, such things like, if uh, Mr. O'Collins, if you say another word, I hold you in contempt. Well, if it's not a court of public record, and that has no effect. If it's not... Um, uh, if it's just a hearing, if it's a first call, they can't do that anyway. I mean, it's it's a blind threat, but it's designed to intimidate you. So I would I would more be inclined to say that if you don't get them to a court of public record, that they can continue their bag of tricks to lie, to feign, to ignore, uh, to intimidate. That's really the major major concern. Right. Uh... I have another question. This I don't want to take too long. Uh, mm-hmm. It's my contention. After I've studied this for quite a few years, uh, the appearance says it is as it is today that there is no public law; it's all private. Uh, I've went through the revised code of Washington. Uh, there's even court cases saying, you know, it's. Uh, uh, I'll just. I got it right here. A compila- compilation entitled Revised Code of Washington, which is not the law. That's an act purporting to amend only a section of the prima facie compilation leaves law and change. It says well, that I, law has I think, um, as sorry to interrupt, but can I just can I just agree with you? But let me let me qualify what I, I said earlier. Okay. I, I did I did actually sometimes I, I, I talk quickly or <laughs> I say a lot. Uh but what I said earlier was, and I used the analogy of Eucadia law to Roman cult law. Now, Eucadia law to Eucadia members is public law. It's our law of the community. Right. That's what we mean right. when I say public law. But to us, looking at Roman law, we would consider Roman law a form of private law, which we may or may not accept depending upon whether it contradicts our law. You follow? Oh, absolutely. Now, let me flip it back to to their system. You're absolutely right that the statutes and policies by which we're discussing all of this procedure is corporate law. It's the law of corporations that usurped a state law some, uh, some time in the 19th century and that it is not public law. It's not even close to being the laws derived from the Constitution, the will and testament formed for the United East States. It's not even close. So you're absolutely right. But so that we don't kind of get confused, or I get confused, is that when I'm describing submitting forms to them in the the style that they accept, I'm calling the word public as a form that they recognise by their statute. I don't mean it in the broader sense that you're rightly referring to. Does that kind of clear up what I was saying? Uh, yeah, it it does. Uh, it, it gets confusing. It does get confusing. <laughs> but but I, for... What I've witnessed is there, even their statutes, what we're referring to as statutes, even in the court rules, it defines them as agency rules. Yeah, it's all agency, and that's why I wanted to make that point, that when you look at the very first uh, laws or statutes in the world that get to define the concept of agent principle, agency, and contract, we're talking about 1872. So it can't possibly be a common law right or a common law principle. 
So look, thank, thanks very much for your, your comments. And if you've got something, call back in. But thanks very much. All right, thanks. Oh, that's great. Well, look, before we get to the next caller, I see that um, Guest 39 has put this question in, and I just quickly answer it. The question is, Collins has mentioned it's one of the 13 Illuminati families. Uh, do you know any of these high-level members? Uh, what, what Guest 39 is referring to is research by a fellow by the name of uh, Fritz Springmeier, and Fritz Springmeier wrote uh, a several texts associated called the 13 uh, Illuminati Families or the New World Order. And uh, in that he mentioned the uh, Collins family. Uh, do I know any of these high-level members? Well, um, I have an uncle who is uh, one of the most senior theologians of the Catholic Church and uh, one of the most senior Jesuits living. Uh, so, yes, I mean, I, I, I know these people. Uh, it's actually why... Uh, a number of times, and here it's a really easy thing for people to say. Despite the fact that I've written what I've written, despite the fact that I've explained what I've explained, and despite the fact that I'm somewhat estranged from my family, you'll hear people say this over again, oh, he's a Jesuit, or oh, he's a disinfo, because they refuse to read and listen. It's just one of those labels. Uh, I think... Quite a bit of the, the work that Fritz Springmeier has done is really interesting. And I actually think there's a lot of truth to what he's saying. He doesn't explain why the, why the Collinses happen to have such a spiritual occult history. But if you go and look at Book of the Green Race or Lieber Clan Glass, which I hope Guest 39 would do on one hyphen island, Guest 39, go and have a look at uh, Lieber Clan Glass. That might explain why the Collinses are mentioned because of their history there. Uh, otherwise, it just seems like ambit claims by uh, one author. The only other thing I'd say about it is, sadly, there is no mention by, by Fritz Springmeier of the Venetian families, the Council of Ten, the Farnese's, uh, the, the, the Borgias, uh, the Medici, that eventually found their, their a treaty and, and found themselves also. The these families are not mentioned, and yet these families are intrinsically uh, and key power plays that the Della Rivera, even today, key influences in global affairs. None of them are mentioned. So I hope that answers those questions. Uh, let me get to the next caller, and we'll keep going. Uh, I'll just unmute Tyber. Let's see if we can get unmute Tyber here. One sec. Hello, Tyber. Can you hear us? Hi, Frank. How you doing, buddy? Going well. Hope your family's well. Everything's good? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Okay, um, I did a A for V. It worked with my credit card, and that was the only one that ever worked. Um, I tried a promissory note on the car. They seem to accept it, but there's no bailiff here. They put a lien against my car now, so if I'm caught driving my car, I'm pretty sure they're going to tow it, and i got to go to court and defend my rights. That's the one question. What can I do with my car? I'm trying to raise up the nine grand to pay off the lien, but I'm not having a good time. And if a cop stops us and we show him our ID, and on the back of the ID card it says if a police officer stops us or impedes us, he's under full commercial penalty, et cetera, et cetera. I don't have my card with me. How can we have any authority with that? Because they just blow it off and say, no driver's license, whatever, here's your ticket. See you later. If not, you're arrested. Those are my two questions. Well, look, what, what's happening now is the, the frontline policy officers who are a militia, right? There are a militia. Yep. Because yeah. a corporate, it's a corporate militia. They've got nothing to do with being peace officers. Yeah, correct. Are being trained now to arrest, detain, and in some cases attack and, and intimidate anyone that uh, appears to um, not be a a compliant slave. Yes. Uh, seems that way. Yeah, it's going that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I, I I would not poke the bear in an eye with a big stick. Uh, let me let me. Let me give you an example of, of what I would be looking to do. If I was not, I have a driver's license. I make no bones about it. I have a driver's license. I didn't, I mean, I put VC on it. I didn't go overboard. I didn't go and ask for them to recognize my independence. I, I, didn't, I didn't die in a ditch about it because, you know, on the, on, the, on the scale of things, 
uh, as, an, as an occupant of the Office of General Executor, I can revoke any signature or power of attorney any, any time I like, yeah? Correct. Just as they can apply presumptions on their end any time they like. It wasn't worth me dying in a ditch on a driver's license to make a point because it's like picking a debate with someone on whether you're going to pay for a, a hamburger when the real issue is how much money was made on your birth certificate in a security. Agree? Agree. Well, I have no problem with taking a ticket in that from the officer and going about my way in peace, but we've got to have some form of remedy to get them to stop harassing us this way. You know, that's what I was well, thinking. Well, okay, and, and this is a point I, I'd say. If you are gridded into the system and you have one of their drivers, one of their driver's licenses and their plates, then as a general rule, they're not going to pick you out any more than anyone else. Yeah. True enough. True enough. You're uh, in a okay. So, oh, yeah. so that that is to me the op optimum approach. You know, go about your business. Don't pick a fight on something like that. Certainly not against people who are now more armed than our grandfathers were in World War Two. <laughs> right? Yeah, I agree with you. Keep your car insured, okay. keep the plate registered, and it, drive it, by their merits. Just go about your business and deal with, the, deal with the bigger picture. What I would say to you is that as, as communities are established, communities will need to uh, approach the, the Roman authority and make clear the underwriting and the status of the communities. And at that point, you will start to see broader remedy, or you'll see start, start to see broader blowback as, this, as their system continues to crumble. But that's what I would say in the short term. You know what I mean? And if you've got a ticket, a ticket is a summons, it's an invitation, it can be dealt with administratively. And that's all I would say is that if, oh, if people pay. are dying in a ditch on the front line, and I got an email I said today on the call tonight, I got an email about it. Look, if, you, if, if, you, if you've got people being arrested and taken away, you're already digging a ditch. You're already creating a problem that makes it harder when you come to court to really appear to be a general executive. Because if general executive is not going to do that, it's embarrassing, right? Correct, correct. Right. So general executive is not going to embarrass themselves and behave in such a petty manner. We just go about our business and realise that if I'm dealing with a guy, even if he's a nice person, if he's gone through the police academy now, he's been totally image trained, right? So your answer is basically still let them extort us at the point of a gun, get their registration, get the driver's license, follow their suit, and, uh, you know, so... Well, unless I'm driving in a convoy, unless I'm in a tank, I'm not going to pick a fight with someone with a high-powered Okay, I understand. Yeah, I understand your point there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. And in regards to lean against the car, any ideas? Well, I mean, it's a question of who has first, uh, first call on it. I mean... Um, you can transfer the, the, the property which is in use into a trust and then they can fight on who has first lien. Um, but as it stands at the moment, um, effectively the property is owned by the state. You're using it. Um, I think you've probably got some remedy there in terms of having the vehicle sold into a trust um, that it rightfully claims it because they can show proof of purchase. Yeah. Okay. Great, and then I'll just wait for the registries to come online with the uh, UK and register it within that system yeah, and everything. Yeah, but then that's why I do it, okay? Yeah. Thank you, Frank. Have a really good evening. Okay, good on you. Thanks. Yeah, bye. Okay, let me just see if I've missed some questions here on the chat before we keep going. Um, uh, let's see if we've got a couple more here. Um, do, 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 do. I mentioned the one there. Um, okay, we spoke about private and public papers. Um, okay, question from Yoda Leahy who before we go to the next caller. Um, is it possible to use the Canadian model trust bond to satisfy an insurance requirement for an employment contract with a company? Uh, that is relying on the Roman system. If so, how? <clears throat> um, not there yet. This was a question that was asked from me actually a year ago, but the, the answer is absolutely yes, that the Eucadia Society underwrites its members. And the reason it underwrites its members is because the members accept as a community uh, to pool their resources together for the benefit of their community. And as such, the community itself 
can start to harness that combined energy. 